Welcome back to part two of Mountain Splendor. Now, I often get asked how I lay my paints and brushes out. And you can see here I have a little disposable palette, a little paper towel with some brushes on it, and my paint, a little stack of paper towels I wipe my brush on, and a clean palette, and it's a disposable palette. And I regularly stop and tidy up my paints and give it a bit of a go with a baby wipe and keep yourself kind of organized a little bit better. Now, time to paint bushes. I've picked up my shadow color that I used on my mountain and added into it the remains of my Prussian blue and black and I'm gonna probably add a little more yeah, crimson into that. I want a really dark sort of lavender color really and um, I'm gonna mix this really well. Now back to my original dark brush and I'm gonna be using just the very corner of my brush and I'm gonna go for that rounded side again. So just the very corner and try and do this out, get my hand in the way but I'm just going to tip the corner of my brush into that paint. See, I tap and I let the brush flare open. Now with the rounded side at the top, um, and I want to use just that corner. I'm going to just tap and try and get my hand out of the way. But you see, I'm trying not to lose that little misty area. I'm keeping sort of below the pin line, if you imagine where that horizon line would be. And I'm just tapping and letting the brush sort of leave a nice speckled effect on the canvas. Let me try that again. I'll just move my hand slightly to one side you can see that my brush spreads as I tap. I don't let it skid too much, but I'm going to just create a nice little bank of trees and bushes across the background. And this really creates a lovely mid-ground effect and pushes our mountain back. I like to let my brush run out of paint occasionally, so I got a few sort of varieties of layers, some lighter and some darker. Some look like they're further away and some look like they're slightly closer. And this way you get a lovely variety of depth of color here. Now you can see that there is a, a little line there, the a water line that I scratched on with the edge of my palette knife. And I'm gonna just use the corner of my brush to pull down some of the paint below the water line. I'm gonna aim for those darker bushes first so I get some nice sort of dark reflections in the water. Now keep pulling down and wipe off a surplus paint as you go. That's it, keep on wiping and then gently edge to center. Always edge to center. Never, never sort of start at the center and pull out because you'll leave a dirty mark on your painting. And maybe we want a little watery effect here. So to the edge of the brush, gently, gently, so you can pull those little ripples out. That's a fun little effect and it looks so effective. Now for a waterline. I take my palette knife and I tap it in some dirty white paint. Just a tiny little bit on the edge of the knife is all I need. Just a little tiny hair of it. And then on that line I scratched, I'm going to slide this along. Keep it nice and level. No ups and downs or funny angles. This is flat level water. Touch, press and slide. Keep it nice and firm. See, I bend that knife. Get a little more and give it another little push. There we go. Now, you don't have to get it heavy white, but just a little suggestion. Now, if, you, if you're enjoying these little painting demonstrations, don't forget to give me a little like, a thumbs up, a little subscribe, and maybe even ring that little bell. And that really helps grow the channel. Now, I've just added some more bushes here so that we can push our mountain even further back and the mid-ground goes into the distance. I'm going to stay with that dark brush and I'm just going to grab that little fuzzy bottom edge and look at the size of the bushes and try and get the reflections to be something similar. So tall bushes need deeper reflections and this just tidies up that little bottom edge. So when you're dabbing on your paint, don't be too concerned about going over the water. And again, try and get the balance of colors just about right. Now, edge to center when you brush across, edge to center, and just go gently and just lift off as you pass the end of those bushes so you don't pull any dirty marks into the middle of your lovely watery area. That's it, edge to center. And you can even do that little 
on edge paintbrush to get some lovely little ripples going in the water. Now back to my palette and I'm going to switch brushes. My dark one's going for a bit of a rest. I'm going to go back to my light coloured brush and again I'm going to be using the rounded corner of the brush. I've added sap green and cad yellow and freshened up my Indian yellow too. These are for some highlights on these bushes. Now first thing I want to do is to partly mix these colours so I'm pulling them into the sort of middle of my palette almost like a, a little curtain of colours a big variety so I can dip my brush in everything from straight green to straight orange and all the lovely colours in between and this wants to be well, at least the width of your one inch brush so you've got a good amount of paint so pull them out nice and flat there we go and as I mentioned I'm going to be using just the rounded corner of my brush so again same process give it a little tap splay those bristles open there we go so you should see a nice little sort of pattern in the palette of sort of stippled paint there we go right on that corner now back to the painting and think about the corner of that brush and where the light is coming from so it's going to be coming from the right corner so the right edge is where we're going to concentrate our highlights and this is just a gentle touch I just want to highlight that edge first and reload frequently if you keep on tapping with no paint well it'll just go a bit mushy and this is just gentle pressure it's the reason why I use a canvas so it's got a bit of a bend now here's a nice close-up lots of paint on the corner of that brush and I just want to make sure I get just the edge of those little bushes so tip your handle up a little bit and make sure you follow that shape and try and save a little dark as you go and also notice I don't leave a black outline I try and tap just over the edge and leave a little shadow and we can just sneak in another little bush into the middle of that little dark area and it's very gentle touch 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 no sliding of the brush so my one word of advice is don't go back over it over and over and over again you'll just lose all that lovely detail and it, and it fills up very quickly and you think you should go back and repaint it all two three four times but try not to try and do it right once and leave a little shadow here and there and paint each of these little bushes like a little individual and of course we can drop a little color in the water for our reflections and add another little water line just as we've done in the background there now let's bring some lovely bushes into the foreground too and I want to think about how I line these up I don't want everything to be too much in line with what's happening in the background so I want there to be a little bit of a difference in distance and sort of like a nice meandering effect here so always think about the positions of things don't just fill it in for the sake of it and once again add lots of lovely little bushes save a little shadow here and there not every bush needs a highlight now time for a big tree and here you can see why I darken my corner of the canvas and put in that little filler mountain I need it somewhere to sort of back up the area where it's going to be a big tree and think about again position here not too close to that edge sort of put it further into the painting that's uh, can they can hang off the edge of the painting too much and you want somewhere midway between maybe that peak and the edge of the mountain and the edge of the canvas and I like to just sort of scratch a little line first and if I don't like the position it's easy to repair and then once I'm happy I'll use that little flat edge of my knife just to scrape out surplus paint and this just makes life easy for us when we put the paint on we don't have to fight over a top of highlight and lots of sky colors and you can also work out how big a trunk you want so I usually want sort of at least between one and two maybe a little wider this time knife widths so again I can work out the size of my tree trunk time to mix up some color I'm going to take some black some Van Dyke Brown and 
I'm going to use that dark lavender colour that I underpainted all my bushes with. Let's not waste it. Let's throw it in all together and mix this up. I want a really dark, sort of chocolatey brown colour here. And I lay my paint down flat and then use my knife and I slide up to gather a little roll of paint so you can really see how much paint you've got. And I'm going to just fill in the area we scraped out. And I'm going to just literally like buttering a little thin piece of toast. I, I don't forget the toast practice we had in part one. And I want to just fill this in with just a nice layer of paint, a little bit of texture to it. There we go. Now for some highlights. Take some titanium white, a little bit of Van Dyke brown to the left, a little bit of dark sienna to the right. Notice I don't put the two brown colours on top of each other, but I separate them up with the white through the centre. And you see here, I'm just going to partly mix these colours together. I want to just marble these paints. Now, if you put the two browns on top of each other and then put the white beside it, well, you'll just end up with caramel, which is just a light brown tone. Here, I have a whole variety of colours. Now, I'm also going to make a little bit of a, a brighter colour for some sunshine. I'm going to use a little bit of titanium white, a little bit of my orange, and just wipe my knife off. And I'm going to pick up just a little bit of this mixed brown colour here, just a tiny bit on the edge of my palette knife. There we go. It's going to be a surprise what we get. Now... Remember, the light is coming from that right-hand side, so that's going to be the brightest side. And remember that the tree is round. So I'm going to start on the right-hand edge with the brightest of colours. And as the palette knife runs out, I'm going to go around the tree to the left. So as the knife runs out, it's going to get darker and darker. And you see, I'm just touching here. Touch, touch, touch. I want to create a nice bark effect. So this, when it's dry and you run your finger across it, actually feels just like tree bark. If it looks like tree bark and it feels like tree bark, it probably is tree bark. Now, a little hint of Prussian blue and titanium white. I didn't bother mixing that up on camera, but I just want the suggestion of a pale blue color on the back edge of the tree. It's called referred light. And now that little bit of orange and white it's like a little bit of sunshine, doesn't it? Just catching the edge of that tree trunk. Wow, it looks good enough to eat, doesn't it? There we go. And take your time with this. Really spend time building up that lovely texture. Now, time for a few branches. And you'll need some thinners or some linseed oil and a little liner brush for this. And I've mixed it with some of the dark green tree trunk colour and I want to think about the shape of my tree growing out and up. Now I'll try and keep my hand out of the way and you see I let my hand wiggle and shake and I paint holding the brush right at the very end. It's a nice little close up for you and because I don't land on the branch every time I go along the branch so I reach a little lump or a little bobble and then I go off and this way I can build up the size of the branch and I don't get lots of sort of full starts. And there we go. And add lots and lots and lots of little branches. Now today I'm going to be putting some foliage on this so I really only need to put on a few branches but if this was a tree that was lost all its leaves I would put on hundreds of little branches and make a really good job of it. There we go. It doesn't take long to sort of build the, the shape of our tree. Now, do remember that branches go in front of the trunk as well as behind. They're not just flat. So always have tree branches crossing the trunk and going behind the trunk as well. It gives it a much better look. Now, off screen, I mixed up some sap green and black. And I use my dark brush and I put that on the edge of my brush, right across the edge. So it's sap green and black. And I use the whole of the edge of the brush this time rather than just the corner. And I'm just going to tap on some very, very dark green colour. This is the underpainting colour for some foliage. 
like we did the bushes with that very dark purpley color this is a very dark green color and think about the shapes of these branches being like little umbrellas and this is why i didn't go too mad with those branches because i knew i would be covering it up and i just want to fill my tree up and i make sure i cover in the top and go across the trunk at least once or twice now back to the highlight brush and again logo up and this time highlight colors right across the edge of the brush and just gentle pressure it's a bit like doing the bushes but just using the whole edge of the brush see sometimes i favor just the corner a little bit more and load your brush frequently and try not to cover up too much of that lovely dark underpainting when you look at a tree you'll see that there are highlights and shadows all the way through now you can see that a little sort of cover mount we put in the background there so useful for this part of our painting and here you see me adding those little touches and of course where the tree goes into those bushes at the base just cover that up a little bit as well gosh we're almost there with our painting just a few more little details left to do here and there and i'm going to use my liner brush again and just add a few little sticks and twigs here and there maybe use the edge of the palette knife just to push up some dark green colors and spend a good amount of time adding these details people love to see all this fine detail work and don't forget add a signature so you know it's yours my little bird on top and of course a frame complete with thumbprint of course well, it's been a lovely painting day and I've enjoyed it. So from me and Henny, happy painting. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And don't forget, like and subscribe down in the right hand corner. See you soon. Bye bye.